What's up, everybody? Welcome to a new English bit. I'm Katia. In today's lesson, we're going to learn 10 super useful and common expressions. I love learning new expressions. Actually, in my vocabulary notebook, there is one section for expressions. I think they can help you a lot gain fluency. Are you ready to expand your vocabulary? If so, grab your vocabulary notebook and let's kick off! So the first expression on my list today is actually a question. Come again. Come again. And we can use it in different situations. The first one is when we didn't hear something or we didn't understand something and we want to ask another person to repeat the same information. This is one occasion. The second one, you can use this expression when something sounds unbelievable and you want to check that it's correct. And now let's look at three examples. So the first one, come again, you're breaking up. The phrasal verb, to break up, means to stop being heard. So it's when you can no longer hear another person when speaking on the phone. You're breaking up. The second one, I crashed your car. Come again. So in this case, this information is unbelievable and surprising. And one more example, come again. You were attacked by a bear. And now let's move on to our second expression. Hush. Hush. It's very short and it means silence. So we use it to make someone be quiet and stop talking. And now a few examples. The first one, hush. I'm trying to concentrate. Another example, hush, let him get his message across. Here we've got another phrasal verb, to get something across, which means to communicate an idea or message successfully. And one more example, it's from the song Mirrorball by Taylor Swift. And she sings, hush, when no one is around my dear, you'll find me on my tallest tiptoes. I think it's much easier to remember new vocabulary through music. Let's move on to our third expression. I can take it anymore. If you want, you can omit the subject. I can take it anymore. So we use this expression when we can't put up with something any longer and it can be mentally, emotionally or physically. And now let's look at three examples. The first one, I'm sick and tired of walking uphill. I can take it anymore. The second example, I'm fed up with failing the exam over and over again. Can take it anymore. And one more example, she's always complaining about everything. I can take it anymore. Number four, I have no other choice. Or if you want to add more information, you can say I have no other choice but to do something. We use this expression when you can't avoid doing something and there is no other option. And now a few examples. The first one, are you going to the meeting? I have no other choice. The second example, they had no other choice but to put off their wedding. And the last example here, he had no other choice but to apologize to her. Number five, one of my favorites, I've got your back. I've got your back. It's used when you want to say that you're ready to protect or defend someone. It's like, I'll be there for you. And now, some examples. 
The first one, if anything goes wrong during the trip, I've got your back. The second example, if there is an emergency while you're away, don't worry, I've got your back. And another example, if your business venture fails, I've got your back. And guys, before we continue and learn five more super useful expressions, just a super quick reminder, please make sure you're subscribed to English Bits and your bell icon is on. There is a weekly lesson waiting for you. It's on Sundays at 12 p.m. Thank you. And now let's continue with our lesson, our expression number six, it stinks. It stinks. We can use it in two situations. The first one, it's when something or someone smells unpleasant. For example, take out the rubbish, it stinks. And the second situation in which you can use it stinks is when something is not good. And now let's look at a few examples. The first example, his English stinks, but he gets by. The phrasal verb to get by means to live or to deal with a situation by having very little of something you need. The second example, the whole situation stinks, but don't give up now. And one more example, I won't be able to make it to the party because I'm going down with flu. It stinks. Get better. And here we've got one more phrasal verb, to go down with something, which means to start to suffer from an infectious disease. Number seven, just to be on the safe side. If you want, you can omit just, to be on the safe side. So we use this expression when we want to be especially careful in order to avoid something unpleasant. It's a synonym of just in case. And now a few examples. The first one, I like to get vaccinated just to be on the safe side. The second example, you should get a checkup once a year just to be on the safe side. And one more example, to be on the safe side, double check that you took your passport. Number eight, there is no in-between. There is no in-between. It means there is no midpoint. And in Spanish, we say no hay punto medio. And now, a few examples. The first one, it's either boiling or freezing in Madrid. There is no in-between. The second example, I'm either snowed under with work during the academic course or have too much time on my hands in summer. There is no in-between. If you want to know what to have too much time on your hands means, check out one of my very old videos. You can find the link in the description box and you can also click on the card at the top of the screen. And one more example, she either splashes out on expensive restaurants or doesn't eat out whatsoever. There is no in-between. Whatsoever means at all. And here we've got a C2 phrasal verb to splash out on something. It means to spend a lot of money on buying things which are usually very expensive and actually you don't need them. Tomorrow to go, a British expression up to the mark, up to the mark. It means to be good enough. Let's put it into an example sentence. His performance has been up to the mark lately. And one more example, your composition is up to the mark. And if you want to make it negative, we can say not to be up to scratch, which means not good enough. For example, Sutton is such a perfectionist and she thinks that her speech wasn't up to scratch. And last but not least, you've got to be kidding me. We can also say, 
you must be kidding. This expression is used to show that we are very surprised by something that someone has said. It's a synonym of you must be joking. And now, three examples. The first one, you forgot that we were supposed to meet up this afternoon. You've got to be kidding me. The second example, you turned down the second to none job offer. You've got to be kidding me. If you want to know what second to none means, check out my previous lesson on 10 advanced false friends. And the last example, do you like this guy? You've got to be kidding me. He's not your type. So guys, that's it for today. Thank you for having watched this video up to the very end. I hope you found it useful and learned some new expressions. Please let me know in the comments below which expression is your favorite. In my case, I like I've got your back. And guys, this is the eighth edition with super useful expressions. If you want to check out the previous editions, you can find them right here and also in the description box. And of course, if you learned something new, please don't forget to like this video, to subscribe to my channel and catch me on Instagram for more daily English. With that being said, thanks for watching and see you next week. Ciao for now!